Hello and welcome to Children's Sunday School Online. I'm Miss Rebecca here at Pound United Methodist Church and I thank you for taking the time out of your day to stop and to get into God's Word. The best way to begin your week, the best way to begin every day in your life is to invite God in and ask Him to be a part of of your day. I know it seems crazy because we know that God is just always there, but it's a great thing to stop and to be purposeful and say, Dear Jesus, help me with my life today. Dear Jesus, help me follow you today. It's something that I do every single morning. Before my feet even hit the ground out of my bed, I invite Jesus to come and to be a part of my day. And what's a great thing to do also is that every week, to begin your week by getting into Children's Sunday School Online, by hearing the messages, and by hearing the stories in the Bible, and then applying them to your lives. Okay, so last week we heard a great story about a woman at the well, and nobody else included her, nobody else really liked her, and then Jesus shows up, and Jesus invites her to belong to him. Jesus says, I know all of the things that you've done in the past. I know all of the wrong decisions that you've made, and I still love you, and I still want you to choose me, and I want you to follow me, and I want you to belong to me. And we talked about how the woman was so unbelievably excited that she left Jesus. She ran into the town where everybody was mean to her, where everybody ignored her, where nobody included her, and she stopped, and she included all of them. And she said, hey, hey, come with me. Let me share Jesus with you. He's at the well right now. Stop what you're doing, and you need to meet Jesus. And you, you had a faith in action challenge. And your faith in action challenge was to be like that woman at the well, to go out into the world, to share Jesus, to tell somebody about Jesus, and to invite them to learn about, to follow, and then to belong to him. Did you do that? If you did do that, who did you talk to? Maybe did you tell them the story about the woman at the well? Did you share the story about how Jesus was born? What did you do in your life to invite Jesus? Now, obviously, if you were in, in person Sunday school, we would be having a conversation about that or you would be sharing it with your classmates. And we're not, but that's okay. You can send me a text. You can send me an email. You can tell your mom, tell your dad, tell somebody about how you share Jesus with somebody else. Because we want to make sure that we are included as many people in our faith in action challenge also if you did not do the challenge it's okay I want you to pray about it and then I want you to try to do it again next week it's so important that we do not just hear the messages of the Bible but we take them out into the world and we become part of the change and we can only become part of the change if we include others and if we share with them the stories that we learned. So you can go and share the story of the woman at the well. And maybe you're saying, Miss Rebecca, I missed Sunday School Online last week. No problem. You can go back and watch all of the old ones. Because the great part about technology is there is no reason to miss Sunday School at all. If Sunday doesn't work for you, watch on Monday. If Monday doesn't work for you, watch on Tuesday. And it, you, know, you can include your moms and your dads and your grandmas and your grandpas and your aunts and your uncles. And you guys can all watch Children's Sunday School online together. And then you can talk about it. Having faith and including other people in your faith is so important. Not only are you talking about Jesus and sharing Jesus, are you remembering to thank Jesus? Are you remembering to say, Dear Lord, thank you for all of the blessings in my life. Dear Lord, thank you for the struggles in my life, even though I'd rather not struggle, because I know that you're helping me become a better person and to follow you. It is so important that we remember to stop and to not just pray to God and talk to God, but to thank God for all of the wonderful things that we have in our lives. So right now is the time we're going to get ready to go to our first song. So you can go to your second device and you go ahead and press play. And underneath here in the drop down menu or back on our on our online Sunday school homepage, it's song number one. And it's the last week of the month. So this is the last week for this song, for these songs. They're still up online that you can always go back to. Our song is called I Thank God by Maverick City Music X Upper Room. It's an awesome song. It's long, but I love it. It has such great energy, has a good vibe, you can dance, you can sing, and better yet, it reminds us to thank God. All right, everybody, enjoy.
So our faith word for the month of July has been we've really focused on the word belong. And that means to know that you are accepted and that you are included in God's family. When we choose to follow God, when we choose to listen to his teachings and to follow them and to take them out into the world, then we choose to belong to his family and that we know even when we mess up, even when we make mistakes, that we are still loved and we are still accepted. And all we have to do is go back to Jesus and say, hey, I totally screwed up. Here's what I did. We can repent of our sins and Jesus forgives us. We are a part of his family. When we choose to belong to God, when we choose to follow his teachings, he says he's always going to be there with us. He's always going to be right next to us anytime we're going through a struggle. And the coolest part is, is we can just call out to him and say, hey, dear Lord, help me with this. I love knowing that I belong to Jesus when I'm obeying, when I'm listening, when I'm following the Bible, and even when I am not. And I know that he's always right next to me. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our second song by Jordan Feliz and go ahead and press pause, go to your second device. And next to me by Jordan Feliz, enjoy. Our Bible verse this month comes out of the book of 1 Corinthians, which is in the New Testament, chapter 12, verse 4, and it says, There are different spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. I'm going to say it again. There are different spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. What I love is we need to constantly, constantly remember that God created us to be different. And instead of being frustrated or overwhelmed about our differences or even trying to necessarily change our differences, we need to take a deep breath and realize that when we are following God, that when we are listening to his teaching, that when we are making choices in our lives that align with God's message, that those differences that he gives us and that makes of us, that he celebrates them, he loves them. So celebrate your differences, encourage somebody else's differences because they are given to us by the Holy Spirit, which is God, which is Jesus. And he loves us and wants us to share those spiritual gifts with other people. So our lesson today is going to be out of the book of Acts. It's called Peter's Dream. It was actually really long, and um, Miss Sherry has broken it up for us, so we're kind of going to be all over the place. The entire part of it is Acts 10, verses 1 through 48. That's really long for online Sunday school. So again, she's going to skip around. However, I do challenge you with your family, maybe tonight, tomorrow, whatever, to go back and read all of Acts chapter 10 verses 1 through 48 together and maybe you can hear what your mom and dad had to say about it too i think that's kind of cool to go back and read the scripture verses with them okay miss sherry go ahead and take it away hi everybody welcome back to sunday school i hope you've had a great week miss sherry is here with our bible reading for today and we're going to be reading out of the deep blue bible if you'd like to follow along so our reading today is a little bit longer and we do have it broken up uh we're going to be reading from the acts of the um from acts chapter 10 verses 1 through 17 23 through 29 34 through 36 and 44 through 48. So you are welcome to follow along and we can go ahead and get started. There was a man in Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion in the Italian company. He and his whole household were pious, Gentile God worshipers. He gave generously to those in need among the Jewish people and prayed to God constantly. One day at nearly three o'clock in the afternoon, he clearly saw an angel from God in a vision. The angel came to him and said, Cornelius. Startled, he stared at the angel and replied, What is it, Lord? The angel said, Your prayers and your compassionate acts are like a memorial offering to God. Send messengers to Joppa at once to summon a certain Simon, the one known as Peter. He is a guest of Simon the Tanner, whose house is near the seacoast. 
When the angel who was speaking to him had gone, Cornelius summoned two of his household servants, along with a pious soldier from his personal staff. He explained everything to them and sent them on to Joppa. At noon on the following day, as their journey brought them close to the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted to eat. While others were preparing the meal, he had a visionary experience. He saw heaven opened up and something like a large linen sheet being lowered to the earth by its four corners. Inside the sheet were all kinds of four-legged animals, reptiles, and wild birds. A voice said to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Peter exclaimed, absolutely not, Lord. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke a second time, never consider unclean what God has made pure. This happened three times. Then the object was suddenly pulled back into the heavens. Peter was bewildered about the meaning of the vision. Just then the messenger sent by Cornelius discovered the whereabouts of Simon's house and arrived at the gate. Peter invited them into the house as his guests. The next day he got up and went with them, together with some of the believers to Joppa. They arrived in Caesarea and the following day. Anticipating their arrival, Cornelius had gathered his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in order to honor him. But Peter lifted him up saying, get up, like you, I'm just a human. As they continued to talk, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you all realize that it is forbidden for a Jew to associate, associate or visit with outsiders. However, God has shown me that I should never call a person impure or unclean. For this reason, when you sent for me, I came without objection. I want to know then why you sent for me. Peter said, I really am learning that God doesn't show partiality to one group of people over another. Rather, in every nation, whoever worships him and does what is right and acceptable to him. This is the message of peace he sent to the Israelites by proclaiming the good news through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell on everyone who heard the word. The believers who had come with Peter were astonished at the gift of the Holy Spirit that had been poured out even on the Gentiles. They heard them speaking in other languages and praising God. And Peter asked, these people have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Surely no one can stop them from being baptized with water, can they? He directed that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited Peter to stay for several days. Wow, that was a lot. But what did you guys think? There's so much that happens in that story. There's Peter's dream. There's Cornelius who has been sent to retrieve Peter. So Cornelius was a Gentile. And Peter was a Jew. Um, and I think my favorite part of the story is um, when Peter says to him, um, I, I, you know, everybody belongs to God. And I have learned that God loves everyone. And even though kind of our, our older rule has said that the Jewish people are not supposed to associate with the Gentiles, God told me to come to you and here I am. And it says, this is the message of peace that he sent to the Israelites by proclaiming the good news through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. So it doesn't matter who you are or what you believed in previously, God welcomes everyone. We're supposed to bring everyone to the table and we want everyone to learn about Jesus and all of his goodness. Wow, that was a long one, but a good one. Sometimes when we see long verses in the Bible, we kind of roll our eyes and we get overwhelmed. Don't do that. Instead, think, wow, this is so cool. We're going to have a longer story. There's going to be more involved with it. What else is Jesus teaching me? And be excited about it. I know I get excited. Well, you guys know I always get excited for the Bible. So this story, like I always say, it's one of my favorites and it is one of my favorites because it has a great message. And what I love about it is as we work through the story today, we're gonna learn that even as followers of Christ, even as followers of Jesus, when we think that we've learned everything and Jesus has taught us everything, we're not done. Jesus is always teaching us, always helping us to be better, 
to share his message and to tell others about him. And we learn of that in our story today with Peter. All right, so let's get started. So a little bit of background on Jesus and Peter. So as we know, Jesus is born, Jesus goes around, he's preaching, he's teaching, he's healing, and he's traveling all over the place. He's not staying in one particular pocket. Last week we learned that Jesus went to Samaria and he spoke to the Samaritans. And so it was really important for Jesus not to just stay with his own people, the Jewish people, the Israelites, but instead he went all over and he branched out and he taught everything everybody about him and about God. So then Jesus dies. Jesus is resurrected. He hangs out on earth for 40 days and he shows himself to his friends. And then he goes up to a mountaintop with his disciples and he says, hey, now it's your turn. I command you to go out into the world and to make disciples of of me to make disciples and to share my story and to tell everybody about all of the things that I have taught you and so then Jesus ascended into heaven and that's where he is right now he's seated at the right hand of God and so then the disciples had the choice to decide to make am I going to listen to Jesus am I going to do what he asked me to do or am I not well lucky for us those disciples said absolutely Jesus I'm on board I want to go out into the world and I want to share so our story today is about the disciple Peter. And Peter is going from town to town to town and he's sharing and he's healing and he's preaching and he's teaching and he's telling everybody about Jesus. And so in our story today, G um, Peter is in the town of Joppa. And so he's hanging out there and he's chit-chatting and he's teaching and he's preaching to those people. So. We're going to pause there for a quick moment because there's a lot to this story. So part of this story is going to be talking about some rules. How many of you love rules? How many of you love laws? I'm not a huge rule or law person, especially if sometimes I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. Why do we do that? But I also believe it is so important to follow rules and to follow what people tell us to do. And so in the Old Testament, there's a group of people called the Israelites or the Jewish people. And as we've talked before, Jesus was Jewish. Jesus was raised Jewish. Jesus's mom and dad were Jewish. Jesus was a Jewish Israelite. So he grew up learning about the Old Testament, all of the rules, all of the laws, and everything that was in there. Now, God gave the Jewish people the Old Testament, the Torah, the first four books of the Bible, and that came with a lot of laws. Do this, don't do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. And one of the main rules that he talked a lot about was food. God gave the Jewish people very, very descriptive details of what foods they were allowed to eat and what foods they were not allowed to eat. They were not allowed to eat animals that were considered unclean. They were not allowed to eat pork. They were not allowed to eat bacon. They were not allowed to eat certain kinds of birds. They were not allowed to eat certain kinds of fish or animals in the water. There was a whole list of what they could eat or what they could not eat. And so Jewish people back then took this very seriously and they followed these rules because God gave them these rules, not as a punishment, but to help them stay closer to him, to be obedient to him and to follow him. So the Jewish people have grown up with these rules all of their lives. Now today, today in our culture, there are a lot of Jewish people that still follow this. They're called kosher Jews. So a lot of times they might have two kitchens where if they prepare one kind of food, it cannot touch another kind of food. So they have separate kitchens, separate pots and pans, separate dishes, and they never allow different foods to mix. And so food was a very big deal for the Jewish culture. Now, there again, Jesus was Jewish, raised Jewish. Peter, the disciple, is also Jewish. So Peter has grown up and followed all of these rules. He's lived his entire life with them, and they are important to him, and he sticks by them. Then there's a group of people called the Gentiles. Gentiles are non-Jewish people. I'm a Gentile. I'm not Jewish. So even back in Bible time, there were Gentiles. And even today, I am still considered a Gentile, a not Jewish person. I do not follow all of those food laws and some of the other laws that came from the Old Testament. 
I don't do that. And so when the Jewish people, the disciples, they started to go out into the world and they would preach and they would teach and they would heal other people from other cultures, they would go into the Jew, into the Gentile community. Now, for me, when I gather with my friends, a big part of gathering with my friends or teaching somebody or talking to somebody, it includes food. We have food at everything, even at church, right? We have movie nights, we have food. We have jump rope, we have food. We have craft nights, we have food. We have food at so many different activities because table fellowship is important. To sit around a table, to chit chat, to talk, and to share life was very important. Now, as you could see, a Jewish person and a Gentile at this point in time they were not able to come together at the table and sit down with one another and share a meal. There is no way the Jewish people would have sat down with Gentile people because it was against their laws and it was against their rules. And that is the main focus that we're gonna follow today in our message. Whew, that was a lot of background, but I think it's really important to understand the background so we understand what the big deal is. Otherwise, we'd hear their story and be like, who cares if they ate different foods? What's the big deal? It was a huge deal back then. It was a huge deal. It's still a huge deal to kosher Jews today. Okay, so now there's this guy named Cornelius, and he is a centurion. He's not in Joppa. He's in a different town. He is a Roman soldier. He is a Gentile that believes in and is trying to follow God. He heard about God, he's listening to God, he's probably praying to God, he's probably talking to God. And so he has a dream or he has a vision and an angel appears to him. And this angel says to Cornelius, the Gentile, the Roman soldier, hey, Peter, the disciple, is not far from here. Go and send a messenger and go and get Peter and bring Peter back to your house and invite him in. Okay, great. So Cornelius has this, has this, has this vision and he says, I'm on board. And so Cornelius sends this messenger and this messenger is on his way to Joppa to get Peter. Now, while Peter is in Joppa, he's hanging out at his friend's house and it gets kind of hot and he goes upstairs on top of this roof and he's like, oh, I'm really hungry. They're preparing food. I'm going to relax and I'm going to chill out. And he has a vision or he has a dream. And this vision, this dream is kind of crazy. Now, some of you might be saying, does God really talk to us in visions? Does he really talk to us in dreams? What I'm going to tell you is, is yes. That is how God talks to me. There are so many times that I'm thinking about something or I'm praying about something or I'm processing about something and I have a thought that comes to my head, a vision, or I wake up and I have a dream and I'm like, ha, huh, I know exactly what Jesus wants me to do. So Peter has this vision and it's kind of a weird vision. So he has this dream where there's a sheet coming down out of the heavens and there's all kinds of different animals inside of this sheet, including all of the animals that he has been told in the past because of Jewish law, he's not allowed to eat those animals. He's not allowed to do anything with those animals. And then in the dream, which it gets even crazier, the dream, it says, a voice, he says, I'm gonna actually read it from the Bible. He said, inside the sheet were all kinds of four-legged animals, reptiles and wild birds. A voice told him, get up, Peter, eat and kill. And so Peter is like, what are you talking about? Eat and killing, what? You've been telling me for years, I can't eat those animals. I can't go near those animals. That is against the law. That is against everything that I've ever done and that I've ever believed in. And he says, absolutely not, Lord. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean in my life. Why would I start now? And then Jesus responds, never consider unclean what God has made pure. So God is saying to Peter, Peter, I made these animals. I made these animals and I made these animals 
for you to eat. So now, right now, do not consider them unclean. Go ahead and eat them. So Peter comes out of this vision and he's kind of confused and he's like, what on earth is going on? What's happening? What was that all about? I have no idea. Meanwhile, I love the Bible. I love the way stories happen. Meanwhile, the messenger from Cornelius, the Roman soldier Gentile, shows up, comes in and says, hey, Peter, you got to come with me. Cornelius had this, had this vision from an angel. This is what the angel said to do. You need to come with me and you need to go with me and you need to come with me to Cornelius's house. And Peter says, all right, if that's what God is telling me to do, that's what I'm going to do. So Peter leaves Joppa and he goes to Cornelius's house. Now, as he enters Cornelius's house, of course, Cornelius has invited him there. He is a guest. What do you do when you have a guest come to your house? You put out a spread on the table. You put out food, you put out drinks. You want it so when somebody comes into your home that they feel welcome, that they feel that they can sit down, take a break, eat, eat something, relax. And so Peter has the same experience with Cornelius. And here's the best part. Before that vision, before that dream, Peter would have been freaking out. Peter would have said, Oh my goodness, what am I doing? I'm in a Gentile's house, there's food. I can't eat this food. I can't be around this food. I can't sit at this table with this guy. And Peter's head would have been spending a mile a minute of all of the things that he would not be able to do, that there is no way he would have ever been able to hear what Cornelius needed and wanted from him. His focus was going to be on the food that he was not allowed to eat as opposed to sharing Jesus with Cornelius. And so now Peter has had this vision, this dream, and now it's all making sense to Peter. Oh, this is why God came to me. God came to me because he knew I was gonna to go to Cornelius' house. He knew that there were gonna be all these foods in front of me and he knew I was gonna be freaking out and he wanted to calm me and reassure me that stop being worried about the little things. Stop being worried about the differences. Stop being worried about the food. And be focused on sharing Jesus. Do we do that? Do we ever meet somebody and we think of all of the ways that we are different? We maybe live in a different city. We live in a different town. We live in a different kind of house. We drive different kinds of cars. We have, I don't know, we listen to different music. We eat different food. We look different. We have different color hair. We have different body types. We have different color skin. And we are so focused on all of those differences that we forget to talk to, be kind to, love, listen, and hear that person. And then above all else, share Jesus. Because of this vision that, G that God brought to Peter, Peter was able to let all of those differences go. And he sat down and he had a conversation with Cornelius. And Cornelius was like, let me tell you what happened to me. And they share this story and they talk about Jesus and they talk about how Jesus is important. And all of a sudden, all of their differences do not matter. And here's, here's what I love. Peter then says, and this is what I'm talking about. Peter walked with Jesus for three years of his life. Peter was, was told to be the leader of the church. And at this moment, Peter realizes, I hung out with Jesus for three years, literally, physically hung out with Jesus, asked him questions, had him in the flesh next to me, and I am still learning. And Peter says, I really am learning that God doesn't show partiality to one group of people over another. Rather, in every nation, whoever worships him and does what is right is acceptable to him. This is the message of peace he sent to the Israelites by proclaiming the good news through Jesus Christ, he is Lord. Peter says, I get it. 
It doesn't matter that I'm Jewish and that you're a Gentile. It doesn't matter that we eat different kinds of food. It doesn't matter that you live in this town and I live in that town. It doesn't matter that our hair color is different, that we're different heights, that we're different weights, that we're different eye colors, skin colors, live in different places, drive different kinds of cars, belong to different kinds of pools. All that matters is, is that when we stop and we say, I choose Jesus, we all belong to Jesus. All of our differences, they do not matter. And in fact, they are celebrated. And Peter says, all that matters is Jesus and sharing Jesus and proclaiming Jesus and inviting Jesus to, with, to be a part with other people. And to invite people to belong to Jesus. And then after he says that, he baptizes the entire centurion's family and all of the household. If Peter would have been so wrapped up in the differences, he would have missed it. He would have missed the opportunity to show love and to show kindness and to show acceptance and to show grace to somebody different than him. Friends, we don't want to miss it either. Stop focusing on our differences and realize that we all belong to God. Okay, let's go ahead and celebrate wonder. Hello, friends. I'm Carly. Let's wonder together. In our story today, we meet a community that is working hard to get along. Sometimes, even when we want to be happy and together, our differences can make it hard. We may want different things, or we may disagree about how something should be done. Here's the thing. God wants all of us to belong, and sometimes that means changing. In today's story, the people are trying to figure out how to eat together. In biblical days, what you ate meant you belonged to a certain community. It's like if everybody who ate pizza had to eat with one group, and everybody who ate chicken nuggets had to go somewhere else. Nobody's food was better than anyone else's, but they were different. God saw that these rules were keeping the group separate. God didn't want this, so God told Peter that the rules he knew of eating could change. Peter was super surprised. It's really hard to change what you've been doing for a long time. Sometimes we're so used to doing something that thinking about any other way is scary. However, God cares about all of us being included. God gives us different ways to come together so that we can belong with each other in a community. In our world today, it's not just food that can make it hard for everyone to feel like they belong. What differences can you think of that sometimes make belonging hard? This question reminded me of one of my friends from South America. Even though we like him, sometimes when he's not around, me and my friends make fun of his accent. I admit, it sounds funny because he'll say the same things we say, but in a different way. Still, that's no reason to make fun of him. I realized that about myself, and now I think I'll ask him to teach me some words in his language. It's important to include everyone, no matter what. Change is a part of building community. Friends, you are allowed to learn new things and change things to help yourself and others be in a community together. Nobody was eating bad food in our story, but they were eating different things that made it hard for them to be together. This is why God helped them learn a new way to eat. God celebrates us being together and everyone being able to belong. Now, it's time for you to wonder. Okay, so I know I'm long-winded today, and I think it's because I just get so pumped up and I get so passionate about how important it is. Pretty soon, we're going to be going back to our school buildings. Maybe maybe you're experiencing even now. Maybe somebody new moved into your neighborhood. Maybe you went to a new place, or maybe something's going on in your life, and there's a bunch of people surrounding you that are different. Stop focusing on the differences and focused on that they are also a child of God and that we all 
have the opportunity to listen to, to follow, to believe in, and to belong to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what's your faith in action challenge? You know your faith in action challenge, don't you? Stop looking at the differences and look past the differences. Who in your world, in your circle, who can you invite to learn about Jesus? Is there somebody that you can say, hey, I really like your curly red hair. Jesus sure made you look special. Is there somebody that you can say, hey, I love all of your freckles. When I was a kid, I still am covered in freckles and I would be embarrassed by them because people made fun of them because I, was, I looked different because of freckles. I don't know, whatever. And then I used to cover myself up because I didn't want anybody to see them. They're freckles, who cares? What does that have to do with anything? We need to stop focusing on our differences and we need to invite people to learn about and belong to Jesus. So go out into the world Love people, care for people, and invite them to learn and belong to Jesus. That's your faith in action challenge. It's not hard to love people. It's not hard to be kind to people. So go out and do it. All right, let's go ahead and go to prayer. And now let's pray. Dear God, you are so good you are so welcoming to all, and we are so grateful for the relationship that we have with you. Please help us to remember that we can talk to you always. We can always invite others to the table and that you love all of us just the same. There is no one person that is better than another, and sometimes that's hard for us to remember. But thank you for welcoming all of us and for loving all of us always. Amen. All right, guys, I know the summer is coming close to an end, but it's not over yet. Um, we do not have a child a children's check-in this coming week. Uh, I'm actually going to be on vacation. Woo and so we're not going to do that. So um, I'm going to take a little break and spend some time with my family. And so, but the following week, so the first and the second um, Wednesdays in the month of August, we're going to be having children's check-ins. Uh, the first one, we're going to be watching a movie and having some food. And the second one, it is going to be a summer send-off. So um, all I know is, I'm just telling you, there might be, there might be ice cream involved. Just saying. That's the second Wednesday of the month. Okay, everybody. So if you need anything, um, I'm here. Feel free to reach out to me, talk to me, email me, call me, whatever. Um, I love you guys, and I thank you so much for including me in your week, and better yet, for including God. So keep up the good work. Do your Faith in Action Challenge, and go out and invite people to belong to and to uh, just belong to God. All right, guys. Have a great week. Bye.